What's up, guys? It's Heroes Never Die First Days Guide for Beginners. So you will know how the game works and won't make the mistake that might cost you long-term progress. Let's go. So the first and the main mistake that you can make is spending diamonds in the wrong area because those are being awarded only from the quests from your uh, ranking over here daily and from the events and uh, season pass. Basically, there is a very limited amount of diamonds in the game. And if you will spend all those on the summonings of the skills, you will regret that later because um, the only way how you can improve the size of your team is by spending diamonds. So I advise you guys to get at least how many heroes I have? Six. At least, at least six heroes before you will you decide what to do with those later because that allows you to get a balanced team and when you get the quest like drop a skill that we have right now you go to the shop and you don't drop 11 of those although that might be better you can go for free draw to watch an ad or you can draw a single one the difference isn't that significant uh although you will save on the diamonds to be honest guys when i got this quest all the time i draw 11 like I, I did the big draws and it was okay so it's not that critical but if you want to optimize it to the maximum, you might not want to do this. At least don't do overdraws. At least not yet. Now, since we're talking about the quests, those kind of go one after another in a sequence and you really want to follow them because I have a feeling that your progression in the game is scripted in the quests early on. They might seem generic to you, but at one point you will get the quest to do research, at another point you will get a quest to upgrade your gear and so on. So you definitely want to finish them and don't ignore them that's a good source of diamonds gold and resources so they're pretty easy straightforward nothing crazy defeat my enemies defeat bosses go to dungeons pretty easy now the training menu here you assign give additional bonuses to your entire team when you go to all heroes so i advise to go for mostly attack here because it's most efficient and when you got extra gold you can get extra defensive stats here and elite train which goes to specific character that you have selected right now so this one goes to this specific guy that you have selected which is um kind of cool because you can adjust your heroes based on their uh needs and role in your team for damage dealers i advise to go attack speed and cooldowns well basically the higher you go the co more costly it gets so it's kind of balanced anyway so yeah attack speed is nice and cooldowns are nice skill damage is nice as well because it gives you more skill damage for the healer though where is my healer there we go uh for the healer though i advise you guys to focus on the cooldowns and skill damage only because his attacks is just an attack but his he heals are actually skills so you really would like to go on those things hard and uh, that will allow him to use his healing more often. Same stuff goes kind of for the tank because tanks aren't your best damage dealers. So you would like to get cooldowns up so they can use their skills more often. Maybe uh, attack speed for the tank that have that skill to lower enemy defense. So yeah, those are the things that I'm doing here and it's working pretty well so far. I haven't spent all my diamonds. Oh, I did. I did spend all my diamonds. And as you can see, guys, I am uh, place 156 already. You can check your rank over here, which is uh, top 1%. So I say I am doing a good job over here. And what nice about this game that top 5% all get the same rewards. There is no special reward for top 1, top 2, or top 3 spots. So it's more even and everybody gets something. There is no like, you are too low, you get nothing. Even if you are at the very bottom of the leaderboard, you still get 25 diamonds and uh, it's really, really nice. Now, don't forget to check the ranking over here daily and collect those diamonds for your uh, position. It's not that hard to get high ranking right now at the start of the game. Later on, it might be different. But uh, even if you get the low ranking here, uh, you will still get some diamonds even for the top 50% which is basically achievable for most people you will get 150 diamonds and that's not bad because it will allow you to get some extras now let's talk about the core mechanics a little bit so you will know how the game works because it's different from other idle games and can be pretty confusing so uh, you have your party over here that contains of I guess up to uh, 10 people I don't know right now I have 6 and uh, you start with three open slots 
and then you will have to unlock each next slot with diamonds and it costs i think 100 then 300 then 1000 and 3000 diamonds it's pretty expensive and it gets expensive as you move on when you unlock the new slot you can put a hero over there and i was expecting that we will get a gacha here with different heroes but no uh can we go to the character please yes thank you you have three types of heroes over here pyromancer paladin and cleric and you can press this resurrect hero button uh to get another hero to pull a hero and uh you will get those resurrection uh tokens resurrection tickets over time they will repeal it so don't spend your diamonds on them you are not in a hurry over here now which heroes do i advise you guys to get in your team early on as you can see in my team we have uh, two tanks we have one healer and three damage dealers for my taste it's like the best match you might want to go more aggressive and get more of those uh, damage dealers but it's up to you I, I'm happy with this setup, it's kind of balanced and uh, I like it so far. And I won't change it for anything else. For other slots, I don't have it yet, so we can't talk about that right now. Then each hero can equip different weapons, well kind of the same type of weapons for everyone, so there is no class specific weapon. And it's pretty straightforward to press auto equip on each character here and they will get the best gear available for them. And you should do it from time to time because it will make your guys tougher. So, uh, yeah, it's efficient to get your guys better gear so they will be more powerful. Then we have the skills. Each character can, can have four skills and the amount of skills that he can have is governed... Uh, well, skills that you can choose from is governed by his level because uh, early on you won't be able to get the higher tier skills for you. And uh, you can get new skills by leveling up the class. We'll talk about that in a second. Four different classes, like I advise to get, if you have several heroes of the same class, I advise you guys to get the different skill sets. For Pyromancers, I have mostly the damage AoE spells. I really like the Flame Arrow. It's really powerful. It's uh, have really high range. Uh, when you have three targets, it's kind of doing pretty good damage. It, it has some slight AoE, so it's not that bad. Then the Fireball, of course, and Burn. And for the third one, you can go anything you want. Like, uh, most of my guys having kind of the same build. It makes upgrading the skills easier and more efficient early game than you know late game you can go for different setups for the tanks i have two different setups one is a tanky so uh i think this lady is a tanky right no this is aggressive one so she have smite she have shatter armor so that's a really good skill that will lower the enemy's defense for some seconds that's good for both fights in my opinion then carrying shield for survivability and the last one goes for hallowed aura because it's a good aoe skill and yeah, why not? The second tank has taunt instead of uh, lower and different skill, but yeah, that's about it. For the healer, I have the single target healing, I have the chain healing, I have the holy bearer, although this skill is kinda sucks, so I don't really like it that much. I might wanna change it to something else for maybe enlightenment, I think I'll do it right now. Uh, come on, there we go. And I have Solid Belief because it's giving us extra HP, so it's always nice to have extra survivability in this game because you can die here and that won't end well for you. So, yeah, since his heals are scaled from his attack, additional attack is really good for Cleric as well. Then we got the research screen where we basically mm, do the long-term upgrade for our heroes. We have the initial level after rebirth i'm not sure what is that probably we will have the prestige mechanics we heal later on but i'm not there yet uh, it's a good stuff i advise you guys to start with the uh, research cost research speed xp and gold gain all that stuff is always good and uh, move on from there to your damage dealer because the stronger your damage dealer is the faster you go through the levels the more goal you get and like it, it's overall good so always get your strong guys strong then we have your soul screen where you basically upgrade your skills you use those um purple stones i don't know how they're called awakening stones and uh you basically upgrade your skills here you can read about all the description over here um once again i advise you guys to focus on your damage dealer first then some survivability for your tank because i was saving those up so kind of 
defensive skill here and some healing for your healer. Oh my god, it's so uncomfortable to play it with one hand. Um, yeah, basically some healing skills can be upgraded. Max health, those things, they are nice. And let's get this one for more healing straight away. In order to level up the skill, you will need the skill um, cards that you get from summoning and uh, awakening. And the higher the upgrade level is, the higher will be the cost of the upgrade in terms of awakening stones and the cards as well. So keep it in mind. Um, that's mainly the reason why I don't advise you guys to summon skills too much and spend on the team upgrades, like team slots upgrades, because we have a lot of skills that aren't upgraded yet, we have a lot of those cards, and we don't have enough of those awakening stones at the moment, so, like, I think it's inefficient to summon skills way too much early. Now let's move on to the class progression. Since you have only three classes here, they have their soul stage, which is basically level of the class. Uh, that unlocks, when you level this up, when you get it higher, that unlocks you the uh, more available skills. And uh, it gives its additional stats, because it... Let's summon something for those guys. I will spend money so you can see it. Uh, almost there. There we go. So there we go. Uh, level up, and on the next level you get increased attacks, max HP, defense, and armored penetration, and the new skill, Radiant Shield, for us. So when you summon those guys, you uh, get their soul points, soul, soul stones, whatever they're called, and um, you get those when your characters level up as well. So it's uh, a good idea to balance your team out in that term. So that's why your damage dealers will always get higher uh, level because you have three of those in your team and when they level up they will give you those stones so it will be easier for you since we're in the shop let's talk about other areas i haven't been paying anything as always i draw one medal from the medal shop i advise you guys to do that because those are additional things uh, for your characters they are pretty good and i haven't found other ways to get them at least right now everything else is for money so i never actually took a look at that because th those things are pretty useless those free draws though they require you to watch an ad so it's not just free stuff you gotta watch an ad to do that up to you if you want to do that or not sometimes you get a quest to watch an ad and those are pretty horrible but you gotta go through this in order to progress the story you won't avoid watching ads in this game now let's go to the village and i will show you the buildings guys this uh potion shop have to be upgraded from time to time when you guys level up when you get higher hp points you will need higher uh, level potions so when you do that bam you switch to the higher tier portion and uh, that kind of covers your requirements for newer amount of mana and uh, hp um you can decide how many of those potions to buy here in the game settings in the auto hunt so here you select uh how many potions do you buy in the bottom here we we'll get 20 let's get 40 i want more of those uh that's the leftover money that you want to have saved after before they do purchase so let's say 1000 gold because i like it for the research for example so it won't go really bad let's get 10k and here when you out to use the potion based on how much hp or mana do you have pretty easy you can also adjust the other gameplay settings here like uh which target do you want to go for if you are really powerful you would like to go for nearby monsters if you are fighting stronger enemies you want to focus on the same target and select auto sell quality over here i set it to normal pretty good for me right now don't forget to connect your account that will allow you not to lose your save and you can change your nickname here so you will be on the leaderboard with your nickname all right now which other buildings do we have in the village we have this statue i think this is for the rebirth but we can't really do anything with it right now then we have this forge, which can be accessed from the inventory menu, where you upgrade your uh, weapons. Although early on, I think it's kind of useless because you change them so fast, so upgrading your weapon doesn't give you that much, and you will spend those stones for it. Uh, that's in chance, I'm sorry. There is also a switch option, which switch the extra options of the weapon, like special bonuses down there. Um, 
I again advise to go for it later on when you'll get the top end, the top tier gear, which you will keep for longer. Because right now the gear just goes through really fast. I'm playing this game for maybe, I don't know, a few hours and I changed my gear completely. So don't go for this. Same goes for the upgrade that's improving the tier of the weapon. But once again, the level of the weapon will get higher faster and it's not efficient to do it right now. Here you can combine three medals to get another one. And once again, when you have plenty of those, that's a good idea. Early on, not so much. What do we have over here? I forgot. This is the research building. And here you got the portal, which you can use to go to the fields or to the dungeons. There are two types of dungeons. The Sanctum one, which is a smaller dungeon. So basically here you have to protect your Sanctum from the enemies coming from that wave. And that's tower defense style, but not that much. Kind of your guys move around, but enemies go into the maze that you will build. So let's try to build something fun here. I think that will do. Begin battle and turn on auto and you're good. I don't really think that you need specific technique here because the enemies are dying pretty easily as you can see. So maybe later on you will need something special like changing the team, uh, avoiding healers for example, going more DPS over here. But right now it does matter for me because enemies die at their spawn points so it's not that bad. But yeah, my advice would be getting 5 of those uh, damage dealers here to do maximum DPS really straightforward right and you have to survive for the amount of time that we have over here at the top uh and when you're done you will get your rewards there we go we defeated the enemy and we got our rewards you get diamonds only on your first uh playthrough of the dungeon and then you will get other rewards so it's like farming uh the required resources for you and for the last game mode behemoth last one available for me right now maybe we'll unlock more stuff later on so subscribe to this channel so you won't miss stuff here you fight the big boss that's kind of the nemesis of yours and you can select different cards here that make the fight harder or easier and if you make the fight harder you will get more rewards rewards here are pretty nice so it's up to you what to go for i advise you guys to try with the basic setup and then if you're good to increase the difficulty although the tokens the tickets for the dungeon they are shared between two game modes so you gotta decide wisely which one to go for depending on what what do you need more i advise focusing on gold and uh, awakening stones here so progress as far as you can and then decide which one to go for so there you go those are the tips that i can give you for heroes never die first days guide once again guys uh if you have extra tips if you're more experienced player than me let me know down below in the comments we will include it in the proper beginners guide that when we'll make one in a few days and uh yeah let me know if those tips helped you out if you didn't knew anything or you knew all of that and that was just extra info for you and we give everything that we can to the new players <laughs> uh oh additional tip for you guys you can play this on the android on the pc on the emulator i will drop the link to the emulator in the video description so you can click that one download the emulator and don't waste your phone battery and leave it running in the pc in the background very useful other than that guys check the video description for more links we have a link tree with my other youtube uh, channels discord and social media we have uh, more playlists with other games and maybe this game uh, guide as well depending on how i will like it and uh, let me know what you think about all that in the comment subscribe like follow do all that hit the bell destroy it smash it and see you in the next one thank you very much for watching guys that's about for now stand for shout bye